it's it's an idea that we're so obsessed with monogamy and it and we're non so bad at it. we're it's we're so obsessed we're, with it and we're so unsuccessful at it exactly like i mean i think probably like cheating is like one of the main things that breaks up relationships absolutely so how could somebody who's perhaps been you know, raised to believe only in monogamous relationships, has only been in monogamous relationships, perhaps is in one now, um, could possibly introduce the idea of venturing outside of that. Yeah. So I want to answer the first question first, which was like, can non-monogamy save a marriage? And this is another yes, no answer. If you are having major issues in your relationship and you have not dealt with those head on, then going into a non-monogamous relationship is just going to magnify all the shit you haven't dealt with. Mm. So it can't like save a marriage in that way. But it can in that I think we expect a tremendous amount from our partners in monogamous relationships. Like we expect them to be our other half. We expect them to meet all of our needs, physical, sexual, social, psychological, emotional, spiritual, financial, right? We, we expect that that's going to all happen and everything I could want, I'm going to find in this one person, which is a myth and is impossible and sets us up to fail. Right. So I think that's that such, that's such a good point. It, it does. It sets that's us up to fail. And so not that people can't be successfully monogamous. They can. But I'm saying there are issues that come up in relationships. For example, desire discrepancies. Someone has a higher libido than the other person. Someone wants to try out BDSM other person's not into it, right? Um, there are issues when one person, they go in straight and one person discovers they're bi or they're queer, right? These are things that under monogamy can't, monogamy can't tolerate that, right? Monogamy says, okay, then one person's not going to get any of their needs met or one person's going to be miserable. One person's going to take it for the team or we're going to break up. But non-monogamy says, oh, great. You're married to a man, you're a woman, and you just discovered you might have interest in having sex with women. Well, that's on the table. That's on the table because we're non-monogamous, right? Mm. So I think, I think certain conflicts, which we see as conflicts in monogamy, don't even have to exist in non-monogamy, right? Mm. You're, you have a higher libido. You have a higher sex drive. You want, you want to have more sex and more different partners than I do. Great. Let's open up and like make that work for everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think it's a way to just address how our expectations are completely out of whack for our partners. <laughs> and, and also just the notion that we can love more than one person at a time. We can lust after more than one person at a time. You know, we, we can have a full range of feelings and desires for other people. And it's not a comment on, maybe who your primary partner is, or maybe who you're married to. Like mm -hmm. we are humans. And, you know, if you read any of the evolutionary biology, evolutionary psychology, you know, we're meant to be around people. We're meant to be a social people. And naturally that also extends to sex. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.